morning. I think it's uh, Thursday. I'm not. Wait a minute. I'm trying to think. Uh, no, it's Friday. But anyway, uh, starting the day out. I thought I was going to be able to get out to the yards uh, clean. Well, it didn't work out that way. Um, yeah, you can't can't see it, but uh, yeah, I did a clean up tree thing for a long customer. I don't normally do that. Man, hats off to you guys that do tree work. You can see the dump trailer full back there. So anyway, I used to do uh, moving trucks when I was young. I thought that was uh, pretty tough work, but that tree stuff's right up there and I was only doing some groundwork, you know, I wasn't doing anything major. But uh, now, finally, I can get on to yards, which I can do yards basically in my sleep. I don't know how to turn this camera around, but yeah, I guess I can't while I'm recording. That's stupid. I'll figure all that out later. I mean, and my gimbal, the battery is bad. So if the video is shaky, um, that's what's going on. But I don't have hardly any yards today. I mean, maybe six, possibly eight, if I count some foreclosure stuff, but that's all flexible, you know. And I wanted to do that video tonight on whether or not the, uh, 26.5 inch tires will fit on the Hustler Super Z. Now here we go, we're gonna be shaky again, but I wanted to show the tires on that, that what I'm talking about. Uh, well, I think I got one in the garage, and one's in the house, which doesn't say great things about my lifestyle. And if I got tires in my house but you know it is what it is oh okay here's one here's a 26 and a half it's it's a meaty it's uh it's two inches to three inches wider than what you're going to find normally and it's and it's uh what 2.5 inches taller so the the thing is is i run low air pressure i run like six to eight psi because i don't like uh i don't like a rough ride oh and i got taller tires for the front too so what i'm trying to do and please excuse the shakiness is go back from the old 72s with the standard deck and go back to uh for next year setting up uh you know an old xr7 72 just because they they cut better and even though i modify the decks on the 72 the old ones to cut decent I still think that I can get a better cut on the XR7. And, and you know, this looks like an old machine, but that ain't a big deal. I just take and put new motors on it. You know, if I got to, I change out the hydros. It's, it's just, you know, all you're needing is the frame and deck. If it's got a good deck, you're 90% you're of the way there. I mean, you don't need much else. All I do is I put the dang, uh, the Briggs, 27 point 27 horse motors which are actually a 30 horse or an 8, 810 cc which the old 30 horse they're the turf um pro turf series engine off of amazon for 900 some dollars you can't you can't really fool with an old motor for that kind of money um i'll show you one of them i got them on all my it's like that uh, hot sauce that old lady says oh, i put that s on everything and i do that i do i got these motors on on uh brand new ones on three mowers and uh but just know this when you do that you got to put spacers between the pto and the drive pulley because these come with the four and uh something four and an eighth inch length shaft and a, and a stock a hustler of this era comes with a three and something shaft so and if you don't do that uh because it's not a press fit when you put that uh clutch on there what happens is it wallers out eventually the the crankshaft on the engine it ruins the engine so you so that bolt that tightens that pto clutch up has to somewhat compress the stack that consists of the drive pulley for the hydros and the pto clutch now you can't a whole lot because then you're putting side load on that bearings that are in the clutch. I use uh, extreme clutches; they're pretty badass, to be honest. I mean, when they engage, it's a whole different animal than when you're kicking on a PTO on on uh, 
you know, like a regular Warner or whatever. But, um, and then also you got to, uh, uh, I, I put the, uh, I can't remember what the brand, uh, it's the heavier amperage PTO switches that you can get off Amazon. If you look around, you can find some that are, that are heavier uh, PTO, uh, heavier, amper heavier amperage, but also I do harness deletes. So I'm getting more amperage out to my, uh, to my PTO, to my hydro fans, everything, because my harness is so simple. It's, it's crazy. It all runs up to, uh, well, I'll get into that some other time, but there's a main bus wire that runs from the battery up to a b isolator switch and that's for the hot and then out from that side of the of that isolator switch there's a hot going up to the pto switch a hot to the uh the fan and a hot to the uh anti-backfire pin on the carburetor so i think that's all your hot circuits and then on the ground you just tag out for each of those components because you have to have a, a you know closed loop and it, it, it makes it very simple but you don't have any you don't have any relays and every junction you go through that drops amperage uh but i notice my fans spin up way faster and therefore my hydros are probably running cooler than when it had the harness on on there so but you lose out you don't have none of the safety you know you don't have the safety switches so it makes it so that now it's your mower you can't really sell it you have to sell it for parts you know you know so or you might be able to sell it to an individual on their own for their own property that you know they've ran snappers or something old school and they don't even know what they, they don't even realize or maybe they realize but they don't care if it don't have all that now this one has a real rudimentary uh double foot lift um not the best one that i've done i've got better examples of having the double foot lift because you know i got a bad knee i got an artificial knee and uh it, it, it gets hurting because the implant goes halfway into the shin but it works its way loose and during the course of the day so you can kind of feel it where the steel goes down into the center of the bone and uh especially when you do stupid stuff like that and do a tree you know clean up in the first thing in the morning you know but in lawns i can handle you know for the most part and uh but anyway, that's a lot to throw out there this early. I still want to do that 26 and a half tires and the tall fronts too. Basically what I want is, uh, you know, with the 72, you have scalping issues if you're not careful, even with the double foot lift and, and stuff. Uh, and, but even, even just, uh, with, with not, without having that, if you have nice flat yards, um, I don't like the way factory is on height. I don't think you can get enough height for a decent St. Augustine cut with the with the factory tires, especially running the the low low PSI that I run, you know. So I I mean I'm I'm dumping the the suspension seats. They weigh like freaking I don't even know how much. So I don't have the suspension seats. So I'm making up for it in the tires, but when you get your suspension at the first point of contact on on bumps, then it's saving the whole machine because then the whole machine doesn't your mass the whole mass of the machine doesn't go you're not unsettling the machine and then all, every time it hits a bump but also when when you have that low psi in the rears or whatnot even in the fronts when you're on top if you end up going on top of a sprinkler head it's not just like if you got your tires pumped up to where they're crowned it, it doesn't just smash all the force of the weight of that machine onto that single point that sprinkler head, which is usually a little bit above grade. So the, with lower PSI, the, the tires mush around it. And then also where a lot of people get turn burns is because they have an unweighted tire. They go into a corner and a, chain, a, a fence or something, and there's only one way to make the turn. So they end up putting traction to um, the unweighted tire, or, or they try to put torque on the unweighted tire to affect the turn. And sometimes you just got to back straight out and and re renegotiate because what you'll have is three points where it's got a lot of weight and then that one tire that don't got any that doesn't have any excuse the, the grammar but 
you know one tire that doesn't now if you got those other three tires with lots of weight and they're mushing then you still have some traction now it ain't going to eliminate turn burn all the time you, you still got to have some you know skill but uh for me it works and you know i don't like a crown tire i like a flat tread square shouldered tire so and then of course you know i cut weight on all my machines that helps a lot too you know i mean one of them i extremely cut weight i even cut the brake drums off i took off all the brake assembly it was my first one it's in the other shed and I, i'll show it sometime but i i took off all the the linkage because we're in florida i don't i've never really used the brakes if we're in a situated in a trailer but like as you can see when mine's on the trailer even when i'm in the big landscape trailer I've got boards down to hold it. I don't I don't even trust or use the brakes. So, so, you know, I mean, I cut those drums off, took out the brake backing plate and the calipers, and uh, now the the brake drum looks more like a flange with the with the lug bolts on it. Uh, trimmed uh, everything I could off the deck um, as far as weight. Of course, I always cut the leading edge of the deck because I need that where it doesn't fold the grass over as, as severely which call, then they pop back up after a surface tension and, and evaporation of the moisture content or whatnot. And then you get, you know, two passes later, you look back at where you were and you thought you had a good cut and those things that got bent way over. Now that's only on the, the old standard decks because they didn't have a lot of extra leading edge. So to protect from rocks flying out or people putting their feet under it, they brought the front edge of that deck down as deep as they do the back. And they don't do that on any of the modern decks. Instead, what they do is basically take the discharge chute in the form of metal and bring it all the way around the front. So then if rocks come out, it would be a shot in a million for it to go all the way past the four inches or so of extra material they have on that front edge of the deck. Because if you notice and you measure, you might have a four inch deep deck on the front and five and a half, six inches on the back. And that just lets the grass in so that potentially the first thing the, the grass contacts is the edge of the blade, you know, uh, so or so it's not as folded over so that the blade can make the cut. But anyway, too much. So I'm going to catch back with you later. Peace out. Yeah, I just finished the fourth yard in this neighborhood that I'm working in. And now I'm going to out to some others that are ways out, which... Yeah, this gimbal's messing up on me. It was supposed to have been charged by now, but... Anyway, that's one of the things I hate about uh, not having a tight route. When I'm doing these close to house, you know, if I need to stop, I had to stop by and get some uh, uh, titanium 095 uh, trimmer line I was almost out so I'm gonna head out to those other yards get them done and then I'm gonna get back in uh, try to do that video on on the tires so, uh, yeah this is the 095 line that I put it's Husqvarna Titanium 095. I used to get it at Lowe's, but they won't stock their shelves, so now I have to order it online. And it's like keep some of that in my back pocket because uh, some of the yards I do are kind of big. I don't want to have to walk back to the truck if I run out. So I'll catch you back later. Bye. I got my yards done, so I'm back at the shop, and I got the old 72 in here. And Looking at them tire things, I know I'm dirty. That's what happens when you do lawns, you know. Uh, so anyway, here it is on the dangle behind me. Uh, you know, I may not be able to do the back tires today. I'm looking at uh, whether or not they're gonna fit because, you know, you see this clearance. And then if you see these tires, how much, uh, bigger around they are but you know we won't know until we do it and then if it doesn't fit uh the workaround obviously is just to change out from these siphon type tanks to uh 
to um, the gravity feet, which I got a, a couple of those laying around. So let me see if I can get this camera set up and I'll do the fronts, but I don't know if I'll get to the back. Oh, by the way, if you're ever putting these front tires on, don't ever stick the bolt out on this side. Because when you see that, the bolt's out. Because when you come around a corner, you're going to snag a chain link fence. And also, always try to put, I would put, where your valve stems are toward the inside and the grease fitting. And, and keep all your mowers the same because it just makes it easier. And the reason I put the, the grease fitting and the valve stem to the inside is because when I'm pulling up to the shop, then I can see from the operator's seat when that is clocked to the right 